Hey everyone, I'm Misha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. Today in this video, I will be showing you how to make custom doormats. Now, the way I make them may be a little different than the way you have seen other crafters make them. I find this way easier. You be the judge and let me know. If you're excited about how to make custom doormats, hit that like button and consider pressing that subscribe button if you're interested in crafting and Cricut tutorials. The supplies you're going to be needing for this project are a blank Coyer mat. I found mine at Ikea, but you can find them at Home Depot or at Lowe's. You'll also be needing some 12 by 12 cardstock for this project, some painter's tape, some ball head straight pins, You'll need some newspaper or just scraps from your recycling bin. And our secret ingredient is Rust-Oleum Leak Spray. Now you can also use Flex Seal. I have used both products. I find both perform just as well. The last time I went shopping, the Rust-Oleum was much cheaper. And so that's the product I went with, but they both do a great job. Here are a few pictures of doormats I've made in the past. They are a lot of fun to make. So let's get started and head over to the computer. Here in Cricut Design Space, I made this design for our doormat just using some branches and some text. The font I used is called Magnolia Skies and I'll link that down below in the description. Now when I typed out our text, it was kerned properly. However, I wanted to adjust the text a little bit. So what I did was I ungrouped these letters. So you can see now they are all in their own individual layer. So before I go to make this, I am going to have to weld all our letters back together so that they cut out as a whole rather than separately. Just to quickly show you, when I inserted text and typed in bless, you can see all the letters are attached and this would cut out like this. However, in my design, I made the B quite a bit bigger. So I went to the top and pressed ungroup and then I grabbed the B and I stretched that out. So in order to get this all to cut out as one image, I am going to highlight the entire thing and then press weld at the bottom right and now this is back to one layer. Now once you weld an image together, you cannot unweld it. So often what I like to do is before I weld an image, I'll duplicate it and then I'll hide the unwelded image. So that way if I ever need to go back and make a change, I can simply find that image and make the change. Now I do not need this, so let's get rid of that. Now you'll notice at the bottom left here that I am zoomed out to 50% and that's because this is going to be a rather large design. So I want to make a template to make sure this image will look good on our mat. So I'm going to insert a shape. We're going to grab the square and unlock it at the bottom left corner. We're going to come to the top and change our width to 24 inches and our height to 16 inches. And this is the size of the actual doormat. So let's just change the color here so we get more of a doormat color. And then I'm going to arrange at the top and send this to the back. And so this is what we hope our doormat is going to look like. Now the largest I can cut on my Cricut Maker with the large mat is 11.5 inches by 23.5 inches. So I'm going to insert another template and change my square to those sizes. So this square is the largest I can cut. So I'm going to send this back to see if it covers my full image. So at the top I'm going to press arrange and send to back and I'm going to click on our gray mat here and I'm just going to hide it at the bottom right here. You can click on that eye and that piece is gone. Now if I put our second template here under here, you can see our design just fits on our mat. So we do not need to slice up our image and try to attach it. We have the perfect size here. Now if you were doing a larger doormat and you needed your image to be bigger, you would take this square and you would slice up your image so that it would cut out in separate sections and then you kind of have to put it together as a puzzle once you have cut it out. So now that we know our design is the right size, it's going to fit on our mat, we can go ahead and make it. So let's get rid of this template. We don't need that anymore. And like I said before, my letters are not welded yet. So I'm just going to get my entire image here. First, I'm going to attach it. I'm going to duplicate my image. And then I'm going to hide my second image so that I don't see it. 
Now I'm left with this one image here and I'm going to highlight it all again and I'm going to weld it. Now this entire image here is one layer. You'll see that here at the top right in the layers column. However, if I do need to go back and change it, I do have my duplicate copy over here and I can make changes with that one, but we don't need that, so we'll hide that again. Now we can press make it. Now at the top here, it says at least one of your images is larger than 11.5. So that's just letting us know we need to use our large map for this project. So we're going to go ahead and press OK and press continue. And we are going to be choosing medium cardstock for this project. So let's go load our mat and get this cut out. I do not have 12 by 24 cardstock. So I'm going to place two pieces of 12 by 12 inch cardstock on my large mat and then I'm going to attach the two pieces together with some painter's tape so that when I peel the cardstock off my stencil will remain intact together. After our design has been cut out we're slowly going to peel our mat off the cardstock. This can be a slow and tricky process so take your time because you don't want to tear your design. Once you've got your stencil off your mat, you need to find all those little pieces of cardstock that are not attached to your stencil and we're going to have to put those in the correct spot. I like to keep design space open on my computer so I can refer back to it so I know how each piece goes. Some pieces are very tiny and sometimes, depending on your design, you may have a pile of these little pieces. When I tend to get more than like 15 plus pieces, sometimes I like to number them in order going from left to right just so I remember where each piece goes. Another trick that I sometimes do is once I have all the pieces in the correct spot, I take a picture of the completed design so I can see where each piece goes when I place it on my mat. I couldn't find a large board to use today, so instead I'm using this large Rubbermaid container lid to put underneath my doormat. This is going to help my mat stay solid and lay somewhat flat so that when I move it around, my mat's not going flop all over the place. I'm just going to trim a little of my cardstock and then I'm going to eyeball where my design needs to go. And once I think it's in the right place, I like to take out my ruler and measure the sides just to make sure it's centered. Once my design is where I want it to be, I'm going to use some ball head straight pins to hold it in place. Next, I'm going to add those little pieces and also attach them with a ball pin. Once everything is in place, I'm going to add some tape around the edges of my design and then we're going to carefully carry it outside. Hopefully the design doesn't move and it stays in place. It is very hot, humid, hazy, and windy today, so I'm hoping this works out. It's not the ideal temperature. Ideally, you don't want to have much wind. I've laid my painting drop sheet on my grass, and I went in my recycling bin, and I grabbed some flyers I didn't need anymore, and I'm just going to put those around the edges of my design so we only get the paint where we want it to be. I've also added a few additional pins to little places I found that were lifting up a little bit and I didn't want to get paint in the wrong place, so I just pinned those down as well. Before we begin to use the Leak Seal Spray, we are going to want to wear gloves and a mask, and I know you have masks laying around somewhere. We're going to shake the Leak Seal very well before we begin to spray it. I like to do just a little test spray on my drop sheet to make sure I know what type of mist I'm working with. And then I'm going to go over top my design and spray directly over it. And we're going to go over it a few times until everything is covered. Once I'm finished, I'm going to remove the stencil. I'm going to try pull it up and across to make sure I don't smudge my design or get any of this spray seal where I don't want it to be. Now we still need to grab our little insert pieces. So we're going to grab the pins that attach their little pieces to the mat and pull those out. You want to make sure you still have your gloves on for this piece. It can be very sticky. Sometimes I have to change out my gloves and wear a second pair of gloves because I ruined the first ones and they got super sticky. And here's our design. It's looking so good. 
I like to let it dry, just keep my mat in my garage for about 48 hours before I put any mats out on display because you don't want anyone stepping on it and getting their shoes sticky. If you enjoyed today's project, hit the like button and let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. I'd also love to see what you're making, so join me over on my Facebook page and you can share a picture of your creation. If you're interested in more Cricut and crafting tutorials, hit that subscribe button and press that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video.